Hi folks, Chris Mask from East Link Community TV is off the chip wagon. Food sport competitor, a couple kicks at the reality TV can. Oh yeah, I do competitive barbecue and just, I like to talk food. So when the Greater Sudbury Public Library Services asked me to do a few of these little cooking videos, yeah, I'm all over it. And this week, we're actually going to go back to a request. So this request, something that's very near and dear to my heart and stomach, ice cream. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. But do you really understand ice cream? So you go according to legend that the Chinese are the ones that originally invented this. And then Marco Polo is the one that brought it over to Italy, apparently. Catherine uh, Di Domici, I believe it was, brought it to France. Thomas Jefferson brought it to the Americas, where all of a sudden it became a household staple, pretty much. When you break it down, it was actually during the uh, Nero reign of the Roman Empire back in, like, I think it was 54 AD, where historians believe that slaves were sent into the mountains to come back with fresh snow, and then on that snow, they would sit there and mix it with honey and some fruit pulp and some nectar and then eat that. The Chinese, though, were looking at the Tang Dynasty and they would have servants bring basically ice to the royal palace. And then they would mix that ice once they kind of ground it down into snow uh, with a fermented milk, delicious, <laughs> fruit pulp, uh, some nectar, and the same chemical that's basically you're gonna find in every pine needle out there you know that chemical that gets added to a lot of household cleaners that gives it that piney scent that chemical is what they added to their ice cream during the tang dynasty we look at the americas starting to document ice cream back in 1744 thanks to a scottish man who had dinner at a governor's mansion and then from there it kind of evolved and what i mean by evolved is the pot freeze method. If you go to any pioneer village, you can still see them using this technique where they're churning the ice cream in these big wooden buckets. Usually they have hand cranks to them. Well, with the invention of the artificial freezer, that changed how ice cream was made. And then you can actually thank uh, a surplus of milk and cream back in like, I don't know, what was it? Uh, 1851, I think it was. Uh, that surplus of milk and cream in the US, that's where the first commercial ice cream factory was established in Seven Valley, Pennsylvania. But the term ice cream, this is a blanket really, because there's a lot of little tributaries that run off of it. Gelato, for example. So this is milk, cream, sugars, fruit. Usually there's some nuts or a nut puree that's gonna be in there, but it's more of a milk-based dessert than it is a cream-based dessert. And then you've got sorbetto. So this is dairy-free, and generally it's more acidic because it's dairy-free and usually has a fruit puree base. So it's not as sweet as conventional ice cream. That's why often you use that as a palate cleanser in between dishes. And then there's sorbet. Now this is kind of like a, a sorbet. There's a difference between the two here, but this one actually does have dairy and that dairy generally is buttermilk. So just keep that in mind when you're looking through your ice cream section there. And then there's something called granita. So granita is very similar to a sorbet and that basically it's got a fruit puree base, but this is a more crystalline texture. So when I was talking about how Nero would send those slaves into the mountains to get the snow, basically they were making granita. So it's hard to really say that that was ice cream, but again, it kind of all falls under the same blanket, right? I can tell you this, granita is super easy to make. And if you were to add, say, Prosecco with some pureed honeydew, Maybe a little honey, throw that in the freezer. Fantastic for backyard barbecue treats. Just saying. So when we talk about ice cream, you're looking at basically some kind of liquid and a fat source. So a milk to fat source ratio, ratio for conventional ice cream is two to one. But the thing is, is that we can get different fats from different areas like avocados or coconut. So there's lots of options when it comes to making ice cream plant-based and vegan-free. In fact, a lot of the big producers out there are starting to go that route right now. The in-between moments of making your ice cream, this is really what makes or breaks the final product. Because if you really just kind of freehand it and your ice cream is going to turn out oily if you've got too high of a butter fat content to it. So use less cream next time and a little bit more milk or adjust whatever your high fat was there. 
Adding sugar is usually a big part to this, but know your sugars. Maple sugar, you can use conventional table sugar, but the liquid sugars usually are the best. So that's where you can make a simple syrup. You can use corn syrup, honey, maple syrup. All those will keep your ice cream nice and soft. Now, storing your ice cream when you're going through the freezing process, shallow containers just like this. You can pick these up just about from any buck store out there. They even have lids on them. These are great, but make sure you put a piece of parchment paper on top just to prevent any kind of crystals from forming. The shallow container versus a deep tub to store your ice cream is going to really help with the freezing process and the texture, okay? Now, ice cream sometimes has egg in it because a lot of ice creams go with a custard-based recipe. And adding egg, yeah, it's going to give you a nice, rich, and creamy texture to it, but you're going to need to use pasteurized egg or an egg product, really, just to cut back on the risk of giving your guests salmonella or yourself, right? Now, the eggs, like I said, create a custard base. And I'll show you what I mean when we get into the cooking process here. You just want to use the yolks. It acts as an emulsifier, basically. It'll bind with the water, and that water is going to come from the actual milk or the milk fat that you have there. And the emulsion, it's going to produce a, a thicker type of cream base for you. So it's already putting you ahead of the game. And this is also going to create an ice cream that's slower to melt. So keep that in mind. Now, traditionally, ice cream should be smooth and creamy, but you're not going to get that with granita. Usually you'll get that with sherbet. Sorberto, kind of a 50-50 there, okay? Common mistake, though, with the ice cream making is that you're not churning it fast enough. And not churning it fast enough is going to result in starting to get ice crystals forming if you're going for the churn method. And while some recipes will even call for cornstarch to use as a thickening agent, that's entirely up to you. None of the recipes that I'm going to show you today are going to do that. But a splash of alcohol added into your ice cream, into your base, is going to help keep it creamy as well. These things shouldn't last any more than about two to three weeks in your freezer. If you do this right, chances are you're going to have all this eaten and gone within a matter of days. So for today, we're actually going to take a look at not one, not two, not three, but four different types of ice cream. So four ice creams with different methods. And when you take a look at the pot freeze method, okay, technology now for our kitchen mixers has given us something like this. This basically is where your base goes in, you hook it up to your kitchen mixer, you put on the little attachment that goes on with it, and you mix it for a couple minutes, and boom, you're gonna get some ice cream. There's another type of ice cream you can make though, where we're gonna use a food processor or a blender, just like this. And then one more type is something that the kids can get involved with because I'm gonna show you how to make it old, old timey with two resealable bags. So if you're gonna do this with the kids, just make sure those bags are sealed up properly because it can get messy pretty quickly. For that, you're gonna need some ice cubes and some kosher salt, but I'll explain that when we get to it. When it comes to building your ice cream, there are certain cheaters methods that we can use. For one, don't worry about eggs. You know, use the egg products that you can already get. Fresh fruit, how about frozen fruit? A lot of these recipes end up asking for frozen fruit just to kind of help with the chilling process. Fresh fruit, well, if you've got that stuff that's just about ready to turn, a good place for it to find a new home is in your ice cream. And while we are gonna do a vegan ice cream here, could get that nice creamy texture from avocados and also from sweet potatoes. Our fats can come from cream, heavy cream, table cream, coconut milk as well. Great place for that. Now, you gotta be careful if you're using things like coconut oil as your fat product, because if your ice cream is too cold, when you start mixing in your fat like this, this is where you're gonna start getting chunks developing. Not a pleasant taste. But two other really good little secret weapons for making homemade ice cream, evaporated milk, condensed milk. Because that's your base basically, already right there, boom. Bob's your uncle. 
So let's kind of move into the cooking stage of things and put some of this stuff together for you. So recipe number one doesn't get any simpler than this. This is actually one of these viral TikTok trends. So it's a high protein cottage cheese based ice cream. And essentially three to four ingredients and a blender. So I'm gonna be making a smaller version versus what the recipe calls for just so that I'm not eating ice cream for the next month. But basically, when we talk about our base, this is where cottage cheese does all that for us. Even gives us a little bit of acidity to it. Now we're gonna make this with strawberries. And this actual recipe is a strawberry shortcake style recipe. But because I'm, I'm more of a texture guy, I'm gonna save the actual pound cake or graham cracker crumbs, which the recipe calls for. I'm just gonna put that on the top at the end of it. And our sweetener, honey. Just like that. Where, oh where, are we going to find something that is gonna magically convert this to ice cream? Right here. So, we take the top off of this bad boy here. Just like that. We dump in cottage cheese. Now remember, don't cheap out here. Don't get the low fat stuff you really want to have the high fat. Because again, fat equals flavor, and fat makes creamier ice cream. So we'll throw in our strawberries, ingredient two. Ingredient three is gonna be the honey. And keep in mind, like I said, when it comes to this recipe, you could add graham cracker crumbs to this. And the graham cracker crumbs just kind of make it more of a strawberry shortcake, but I'm just gonna keep this texturally like this and add some stuff at the very end. Put it onto our handy dandy little kitchen appliance. Just like that. Power it on. And let her go. So every now and again, we might have to stop and scrape down the sides. But as you can see, it's already thickening up. It's even starting to look like ice cream right now as it is. Basically, once you blend this to smooth, this is when you can fold in any other toppings you want, like those graham crackers or chunks of cheesecake, put in some nuts, whatever you want. But you want to put this in the freezer for about three to four hours before you actually eat it. And then when it comes out of the freezer, make sure you let it rest on the counter for a good 10, 20 minutes before you take that first scoop, just to kind of let it get happy again. So I'll scrape down the sides. We'll finish this one and I'll move on to recipe number two for you. Sound good? Recipe number two, super simple, 100% vegan. So here, we're again down to a handful of ingredients. You're gonna want some frozen banana, you're gonna want some avocado, and you can get the frozen stuff from the freezer section of your grocery store. Want some cocoa powder. And then we want almond milk. Unsweetened if you can get it. You can sub in coconut milk if that's all you can find. And then Nutella. Just a little bit of Nutella. I heat it up just so it's going to blend a little easier. You can actually fold in the Nutella at the very end if you really wanted to. This recipe, it's minutes to make. And then basically you're going to freeze it for about one to two hours before serving it. But it is vegan. So lactose intolerant people, vegetarians, vegans, Great little frozen treat, little snack for you in the summer. So let's break it down here. First and foremost, let's throw in our almond milk. So the actual recipe, if I was making a full batch, keep in mind I'm only making a partial batch for this, it's going to be about, uh, what was that? See, I can't even remember anymore. Basically about a quarter cup of almond milk. You just need to have that little base there. Getting a lot of fat from the bananas here. So we're going to throw them in. Boom. Take our avocado. Boom. Cocoa powder. Just like that. Now I pre-measured all this. The cocoa powder itself, it's about four tablespoons for the original recipe, half an avocado for the original recipe, and two frozen bananas. Just cut them into little caps. And then finally, your Nutella. It gets thrown in there just like that. 
And much like we did with the previous recipe, we're just gonna cap this and we're gonna blend it. And then we're gonna let the freezer do the rest. So again, about one to two hours in the freezer, let it sit about 15, 20 minutes before you actually serve it to people. Then you're good to go. So stop every now and again to make sure that you scrape down the sides. But you can see that that only blended for a couple seconds and we already have a nice thick ice cream kind of consistency. You just gotta be careful though, if you're making these vegan recipes and you're using things like the coconut oil because the coconut oil can cause those big chunks in it and that's not really particularly a very pleasing texture. But this, when it's all said and done, as long as you use the right sweetener for it, whether you're using honey or maple syrup, whatever you use, Nutella, that right there is going to be what really fools people texturally and taste-wise with your ice cream. The bananas, the avocado, the chocolate powder, and then your sweetener. Super simple, super easy. I gotta blend this a little more. This is the one you can get the kids involved with. You're gonna need two reliable sealable bags. Because if the inner bag ruptures, you're gonna get salt water in your ice cream. It's not gonna turn out. If the outer bag ruptures, you're gonna get salt water all over wherever you're doing this. But this really goes back to the old timey ice cream making. So you notice that I said salt water. We need kosher salt for this. And it's gonna be at about a four to one ratio of ice cubes to salt. And that's gonna go in the outer bag. The reason why we do this is technically the salt lowers what's called the freezing point. And when that freezing point is lowered, you know, by adding salt basically to water, this creates something called freezing point depression. So we're not gonna flash freeze the ice cream. This is gonna be a nice slow process with vigorous shaking, because you're gonna have to do this for a while, that should produce some pretty creamy ice cream at the end of it. Now this recipe here, we're not going custard based. We're going based with sweetened condensed milk and evaporated milk. You add a little vanilla extract to that, you're good to go. Some half and half as well, and a bit of sugar. You wanna cook this on the stove to melt everything down. Now you could leave the sugar out of this if you wanted to use say canned peaches versus fresh peaches. Talked about it earlier, how liquid sugar actually helps with keeping your ice cream nice and creamy, right? Now, two cups of whole milk will also be added to this. So again, just because I don't want to be eating ice cream for a month, we're going with a shortened version of this. Your peaches, fresh, frozen, whatever, turn it into a puree. If you'd like to mix in more chunks of peaches later, I'd wait till you were done the ice cream stage and just kind of put it as an additive. A little uh, brulee peach with a bourbon caramel sauce on top of this. Mwah. Just saying. Anyhow. So, here we go. We got about two cups of peaches here for the full recipe. You got a pint of half and half in here. You got a half a cup of sugar. We've got basically a can of sweetened condensed milk. We got a can of evaporated milk, two cups of whole milk, and just a little bit of vanilla extract. And all we are going to do with this is take everything and put it into a big old bag. So we'll throw our peach puree in first. And then we're gonna throw in our ice cream base. Just like, as soon as I can figure this out here. Just like this. I'm trying not to make a mess. You gotta be really careful when it comes to pouring all this stuff out. Now you can see this is cooled enough that it's actually turned into a bit of a thicker, almost custard viscosity. And that's what you're, you're looking for here. You don't wanna put the hot liquid in here because one, that's not gonna help the uh, bag seal too. Any kind of hot liquid will create steam and that's gonna pop the bag open. Definitely don't want that to happen. But now, once we seal this up, and again, really be sure you seal this up. That's our ice cream. So how we're gonna turn this into ice cream, we take our second bag, we're gonna dump in a four to one ratio, salt at the one, ice cubes at the four. Making 
shake that up a bit. I could probably add a few more ice cubes to that, to be honest. But now we'll take this and make sure again that it has to be sealed up properly. Seal this one up. Might even be smart to use a little piece of duct tape here, depending on how active your choke are. There. That's good. And like we learned in the 70s, shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake your ice cream. Kind of a paraphrase on that. So this basically is what we're going to do for a while. This could take you five minutes. It could take you 10 minutes. It could take you 15, 20, 30 minutes. But just keep shaking it and have faith that this process will eventually produce some delicious ice cream for you. In this case, peach ice cream. Just keep shaking. So here we are with recipe number four. And this is where it's a little more complex. There's a lot of stages to it, but I don't really need to show you the cooking process of making a custard. I'll explain that in the cooking process of making a caramel to go with this. Because this recipe is going to be a beer caramel ice cream. Yes, beer ice cream exists. So just grab yourself a pale ale. Any pale ale will do, non-alcoholic will work fine. There's a lot of really good breweries here in Northern Ontario that would appreciate your support. You're gonna put this into a pan, get a saucepan if you have it, double boiler, good way to make sure it doesn't burn, cup and a half of sugar, basically two tablespoons of water go into this, four tablespoons of unsalted butter, and then you're gonna add eight ounces of whatever kind of pale ale you can get your hands on. Maybe a little kosher salt if you want, just to kind of bring out the flavor a little more. Now you gotta be really careful when you're making caramel, because number one, it gets super hot. Number two, you don't wanna burn it, but you're gonna get this nice, rich caramel that's gonna give this ice cream such a deep flavor. It's beautiful. So when it comes to making a custard, we talked about it earlier, how essentially you wanna use egg yolks. So a cup of milk, six egg yolks. So separate them from the whites, and then work them on that double boiler with a whisk. And you really have to be careful when you're making a custard because you want it to be smooth and creamy and not scrambled eggs. If your custard goes too fast without you actually mixing, you gotta start over. There's really no way to save a custard that starts forming clumps like that. So by the time it's all said and done though, you end up with this lovely little custard base. So here's where we bring our stand mixer into play. So this attachment here, you really have to plan in advance if you want to make homemade ice cream with this because this has to freeze for like one or two days in the freezer just so that the inside, the liquid in there, gets super chilled. And when we pour our custard and our caramel into here, we're going to get a nice even mix with the little paddle that's already been put on here. And you're going to get ice cream. Shouldn't take you any more than 30 minutes of churning. You still want to let it set overnight. Still want to take it out of the freezer before you're serving it. Let it sit on the counter for about 15 minutes. Now you can buy commercial ice cream makers, which have basically been downsized into a home style version. If you watch cooking shows, a lot of times on shows like Chopped, it's one thing they always run for is the ice cream maker. And that can be a very much a make or break sort of situation for them. But I think just about every manufacturer out there does have a home ice cream maker do a little bit of research, do a little bit of product compare, find out which one is right for you. So for this one here, we're gonna turn it on, make sure that it's locked, and we'll go at about a half speed. And that half speed is where we start adding everything into this. So when you're ready to go, turn it on, or in your custard. Get this right, it won't take long to pick it up at all. And then, our beer caramel sauce. Just like that. Remember, don't use burnt caramel. It just doesn't taste very appealing. Now you can see how it's already starting to form a little frozen substance along the side of the bowl in the bottom. I don't know if you can see that on that angle. The camera's shaking pretty good from this, but 
We're gonna let this go until it hits the right consistency. Shallow container, off to the freezer. Try everything tomorrow. So obviously when it's time to taste the ice cream, this thing shows up, like a little Oompa Loompa. So the tater tot joins me here. Now we did four ice creams today. And I'm just curious to see how good you are at picking out your flavors. Because one of these is vegan with an avocado base. So yes, avocado ice cream. Yeah. See, the thing is, is with ice cream, everybody thinks you have to have a sweet ice cream, but you can do savory ice cream as well. They did try marketing uh, mustard ice cream, but I did that years ago with the World Food Championships. How's that one? It's good. Does that taste vegan? No. So remember this one is Where's basically just on? cocoa powder, some bananas, a little bit of Nutella, hazelnut spread. I threw in some dark chocolate and I threw in some peanuts on the top. But you could use candied banana chips as well. All right, let's move on to this one. Just topped it off with a little bourbon whipped cream to go with it because it kind of goes with everything else. What do you think? Good? All right, so this is the peach ice cream. And this was made in a bag. So that's the bag method right there. Shake it, shake it, shake it like a Polaroid picture. Apparently she's going back for seconds. I took seconds for both. All right, take a look at this one here. Now this one, unconventional ice cream. We'll see how she likes this one. Good, that's getting a big thumbs up. I don't know if I should let you drive after this because that's the beer caramel ice cream. And the difference between this ice cream and the other three okay. is that this one was made with a custard base. So it should be a little silkier and smooth. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Last but not least, it's pretty as it gets there. This is a TikTok sensation. Topped it off with some whipped cream, some lemon pound cake, and a little bit of basil, because basil and strawberry really goes well together. Oh, she's digging into this one with her fingers, too. What do we think? Good. So this is the cottage cheese strawberry ice cream. Remember, super high in protein if you're watching your diet, or you're looking for the whole keto lifestyle. That could be it. So out of the four that I presented here today, what's our favorite? That's hard. It is hard. You're on the spot. You gotta pick one. Um, vegan ice cream. The vegan ice cream, I really? Like chocolate. Wow. Yeah, she does like chocolate. So there you have it, folks. Of all things, the vegan ice cream that was made with avocados, and mashed banana, hazelnut, and cocoa powder, little almond milk. That's what wins the day. Thank you once again for watching. I will have these recipes posted. Like I said, feel free to kind of tweak things to your liking. You don't have to follow everything step by step with ice cream, as long as it's the whole two to one fat to milk ratio or whatever you're using for milk. If you have any requests for another program, you want to see me cook anything in the future, by all means, reach out to the library or you can reach out to me through social media. In the interim, I think I'm going to have a bit of a sugar monster on my hand here for the rest of the night. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day. You know I'm sitting beside you, right?